A black undercover police officer was basically beaten up by his own colleagues during a Black Lives Matter protest in 2017. Now, he went undercover and so did another white police officer from the same department. And the outcome of this story gives you a sense of how profiling and prejudice really works. On September 17th, 2017, Detective Luther Hall was working undercover during a protest for Anthony Lamar Smith, a black man who was shot five times by cops in 2011. Hall, who was dressed in plain clothes was mistaken for a protester by his fellow policemen. And so he was not only arrested, his cell phone was destroyed. They took the chip out of the cell phone and they proceeded to beat him to the point where prosecutors got involved in this case. And now there are some consequences for the officers who played a role in his beating. So here are some photos from the prosecutors exhibit in the case and it shows you how Hall was beaten, you know, his lip is busted. You can see some of the um, you know, uh, wounds on his body. Hall was documenting the protest with a camera and that's when he was detained and beaten, had his cell phone destroyed and was finally arrested by fellow members of the St. Louis Police Department. Hall immediately underwent multiple surgeries following the attack by his coworkers and still suffers from permanent neck damage. Now, since the victim uh, was a cop, uh, there were actually some consequences for the cops who beat him. For instance, Dustin Boone, a former cop with the St. Louis Police Department, was found guilty Thursday of depriving his injured fellow officer, Detective Luther Hall, of his civil rights. The deprivation of rights under color of law is a felony civil rights charge and could put the ex cop behind bars for up to 10 years. Boone also, by the way, has a history of violence against protesters and racism. In 2017, he allegedly slapped a case suspect in the face and sent officers text joking about it, saying the suspect, quote, got his eyes widened with a little slap from a white boy, LOL. And there were two other former cops who have actually pleaded in this case. The two former cops with the department, Randy Hayes and Bailey Coletta, both also pleaded guilty to the beating earlier this year. And Hall has received a $5 million settlement. But notice that there was a white undercover cop who did not face the same you know, experience. No, I actually thought that was probably the most interesting part of the story. They both go undercover. And when the cops see a white protester, what they think is a white protester and a black protester, they let the white protester go completely. They don't do anything to him. The black protester, they kick the living crap out of. He started FaceTiming, the cop who was doing the beating, started FaceTiming with his girlfriend, told her ahead of time, he was looking forward to it. Now, it turns out he wasn't looking forward to beating up protesters in general. He was looking forward to beating up black protesters, okay? And so now this second part of the story is if he wasn't recording it himself, the cop, and and it turned out that the person he beat up wasn't a cop, but was just a regular citizen, what do you think would have happened? No consequences. None. None. And, None. How, and then guys, think about this. How many times do you think that's happened? Especially before all the cell phone cameras and all the body cameras came out for the cops. How often do you think the cops kicked the living crap out of African American men? Just for fun, just for the, because it's not about the, the protest. He let the white protester go completely. They all did, all of those cops did, because it wasn't just Boone, it was the other cops as well. And they're like, oh, good, here's a black guy. We get to have fun by giving him permanent neck damage. And, and, and by the way, of course, the second thing they do after that, normally, if it's not an undercover cop, is they then charge him with assaulting them. Or resisting arrest. And resisting arrest, mm-hmm. and those are the charges they usually put on people. And then that ruins their not only their physical health, but their careers. Because then from then on, every single time they go to get a job, they have to check off, I'm a felon. Okay, let alone going to prison, etc. So this is how police have been systematically abusing black men in this country for literally hundreds of years. And I just, the ring, the, the, Former Baltimore officer who I did an interview with, that, that still rings in my ears. Where he, he's white and he said, even if they put us into white areas, 
We had to get a court of arrest. We didn't want to arrest white people because they could turn out to be powerful. We'd always go to the black neighbors, no matter where you were assigned, and just arrest people. Who cares? You got to make the quota because it's part of your job. And he said, Did you think all black people in this country were lying all this time? No, we we abuse them, and because it's partly because of racism, partly because they have no power, and so that's the reality of America. And the only people who deny it are the ones who kind of like that reality and don't want to get woken up to it. And they just want to say, hey, look, let the cops do what they're going to do. We need cops and law and order. And then whenever you do law and order on somebody on their side and go, hey, maybe maybe Trump or one of his cronies should be arrested for their corruption. And said, no, no, we don't want law and order. Oh, I see. So you just wanted to be able to brutalize minorities in this country. And, and not be discomforted by it. And that's what you hired the cops to do. So that's just the reality of America. This is one of the hundreds of cases we've covered alone, uh, let alone all the ones that are out there that we haven't had a chance to cover. And the ones that happened in the past with no video coverage or that happened today with no video coverage. I think it's a super fair assumption that if you hear a policeman and a, and a, and a victim's uh, accounts, it is a much safer bet to say that the cop is lying and that the person uh, that, that the cop assaulted is telling the truth. I mean, at this point, I mean, how many stories have we covered where the police report completely conflicts with what the video surveillance shows? Nearly every time. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, every, not not every single time, but many of the stories that we've covered. That's why I say nearly. Yeah, no. yeah, you're right. I mean, look, there's the story of the guy that they we did a couple of weeks ago. They hogtied him. Mm -hmm. They beat the crap out of him, and then he died. And and you see it all on video, but they didn't realize the video was going to come out. And they said that he had run into a tree and died from a car accident. It's just one lie after another after another. And unless the guy happens to be an undercover cop. All the cops do thin blue line, hey, he's on our gang. It doesn't matter who he killed, who we beat up, etc. We're all going to lie on his behalf. So don't come telling me that cops are honest. The, the thin blue line means we lie for each other on purpose systematically. That's what the whole point of thin blue line is. Is the chain on the front of the skid steer? Yeah, it's loose. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, all the way up, we're coming all the way from uh, Grand Rapids, so that, that front chain bounces off. Okay, um, do you have your driver's license on your registration proof insurance? Yeah. Do you have any ID on you as well, sir? I don't answer questions. Say again? I don't answer questions. Okay, do you have your ID on you though? I don't answer questions. All right, well. I'm just a passenger. All right, well, I still need to identify you. So if you don't have your ID on you, you know, do you have your name? Can I get your name? Yeah, I got my name. Can I get it, please? I, I don't answer questions, sir. You're talking with them. During a traffic stop, the man in the passenger knows his rights, frustrating the officer. So, I do need to identify you, whether I need to take you down to the jail to identify you so or not. So you're going to violate my civil rights? No. You're yeah. going to violate my civil rights? I'm not violating any of your civil rights. But your traffic stop is with him, it's not with me. It, I agree, but I still need to identify you. I don't know what you need to do. You're, the, the traffic stop is with him. I'm just, I'm just a passenger in the car. I need to identify car. you. So whether or not I have to take you down to the jail to identify you, <laughs> or you give me your ID, that's your choice. And, and that's, and that's what you want to do to violate my civil rights. Don't, listen, don't, don't I have the right listen. to remain silent and just sit here? Your, your deal is with him, correct? Yes. I okay, still so need to identify he's, he's you. the driver. You pulled over him driving. And just to let you know, this is all being audio and video recorded. Okay, so you're being audio and video recorded. I hope so, because your, yours comes up missing, mine doesn't. Because you see, there have been rulings on how passengers in a traffic stop do not have to identify, which we will go over shortly. Okay. Mine, mine's live streaming right now. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a civil rights activist. I, I know what my rights are. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick inspection. Okay. I need you to turn all the lights on for me. Come up front, check all the it sure seems like the passenger saying he is a civil rights activist spooked the officer, who immediately turns his attention back to the driver. I appreciate what you 
guys do. Don't get me wrong. I got family that's police. Yep. But I and I definitely appreciate you honoring your oath and coming back and talking to me. Yep. But what you yep. gotta understand is with what's going on in the world. I know. And that's I wanted to identify you and I didn't I was thinking you were driving with him. I wasn't thinking yeah, no. passenger and that's my fault. I uh, apologize. You're, you're cool. I appreciate it. And I'm just gonna get this done real quick and get you guys back out. I appreciate it. Again. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if I can shake your hand, but thank, thank you. you. You're, you're a good, you're one of the better cops I've come in contact with, I'll give you that. Thank you. Do you see that? Honor your oath. The man's YouTube channel is called Common Law Citizen. Check him out if you can. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled on this very stop, and their conclusions are as follows. Passengers in a car stopped by police don't have to identify themselves. That holds even in a state with a stop and identify law. And even if the initial stop of the car for a traffic violation committed by the driver was legal, the opinion by a three-judge panel on the Ninth Circuit Court in U.S. v. Landeros is one of the most significant decisions to date, interpreting and applying the widely misunderstood 2004 U.S. Supreme Court decision in Hibble v. Nevada. Many people think that the Hibble decision upheld the constitutionality of requiring anyone stop by police to show ID, but that's not what the Supreme Court actually said. The Ninth Circuit panel that decided U.S. v. Landeros read the Hibble decision carefully and correctly and gave important and explicit guidance on the narrowness of its findings and what it actually means for people who are stopped and asked for ID by police. 